Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man that's going to be defending his amateur bantamweight title come on Saturday night, October 13th, and it's a rematch from his very first amateur fight. It is Mitch Raposo's 5-0 and in his career. Mitch, man, I appreciate the time. Uh, I had a chance to, to go back and watch that fight. I found a clip on YouTube, and uh, one of the things that kind of stuck out to me was actually when you were waiting to see who's going to be announced as the winner, and, and the announcer was kind of taking his time, and you were kind of like, oh, oh, oh. So kind of take me, th- was that maybe the most nervous you've ever been waiting to hear if you won the fight? Yeah, definitely, because the fight wasn't even close, you know what I mean? So like, the, but I was in his, just like uh, this fight would be kind of in his hometown, so I kind of was like confused because he was taking a while. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to, I was going to have just a little bit of fun with it too. You know what I mean? I knew I won. You know what I mean? I think if he would have read the other way, man, I think that would have been one of the worst decisions. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like, I, I knew I won. It's just, I think I was having just a little bit of fun with it. So how did, uh, obviously that was a little over a year ago, June of last year. How did you get your, your start in, in mixed martial arts? Was it something as a child you were involved in martial arts and just ultimately you just, there came a point where you realized that you wanted to be a fighter? Around when I was 12 years old, my neighbor started training, and uh, I was always like an aggressive kid, athletic kid. So I decided. He said the kids' program was actually really uh, accomplished in grappling and stuff like that. So I just I gave it a try, and on the first day, I just I just was doing stuff like I learned in movies. So I was just like I just feel like everyone was just telling me I was a natural. So I was just like, you know, I'm gonna, I I just never left. And sooner or later, the people started telling me I could really be like a champion one day in this, and that's when just everything uh, changed for me. Mentioning about the fact of the first time that you took on David was June of last year, your first amateur fight. What when you go back and you look at that fight, do you kind of look at yourself and go, "Man, what was I doing back then?" Yeah, it's definitely like weird because I was. You know I mean, obviously, I've been training since I was twelve, so I couldn't fight until I turned eighteen. And uh, just the level of comfort I've seen, like from my first fight to my last fight, just I, I just remember being in that fight. It was just like uh, I was so so nervous and. Just being in the fight, I was just very like I just felt felt very tight. You, that's not really my style. I like to let loose and move a lot and stuff like that. So I just definitely, uh, definitely just you know what I mean it's my first fight. You know what I mean it's just just the way it is for everybody. And sometimes I don't really like watching my fights. So when I do watch it, sometimes it's like, oh wow, you know I can. Do, but it's good to see how far I've come. Do you still get nervous before fights? Yeah, I would say so. Even though without all the kickboxing fights I've done, my wrestling matches and jiu-jitsu tournaments I've done my whole life and stuff. I would say I still get nervous, but I've just before when I was younger, it was just unbearable. I couldn't, I, the nerves were just so bad. And, but now I just, I've, especially wrestling, you know what I mean? It's, it just taught me to love it. You know what I mean? I just know, I know how to compete. And when you put me in there, you put me under the lights. I'm just, I, I'm very home there. When you started training martial arts, was it something where it was an instant love or, or did it take some time? Instant love. It absolutely. Like, so I was a very good baseball player. I played hockey and, but nothing was like fighting. You know what I mean? I, I grew up with two older brothers and like fighting was pretty normal to me. You know what I mean? Especially with them and stuff. So just doing it was instant love. You know what I mean? Like I've never like, I was there every single day. You know what I mean? I, I was training, I was 13 years old, like 65 pounds, but I would show up at five o'clock and I would stay all the way to the adults class, man. Like it was instant. You know what I mean? It took over my whole life. Now do your brothers fight? No, actually I have one brother who's actually in the military. Then I have my oldest brother. He's a, uh, a mechanic. They don't. They don't. They're. You know I mean, tough kids. They can scrap, but they can't. They don't fight. So, in terms of your other brother, that's that's not in the military. Does he come to your fights? Yeah, he should. He usually comes. You know what I mean? Like, usually I try to get the family out there. You know what I mean? It's definitely intense. Like some of my aunts and stuff, and don't really want to go because it's it's very intense. My mom actually likes going though. You know, I mean? surprisingly, you know, what I mean? not a lot of moms would like seeing their son fight, but I think she knows that I'm very comfortable in that setting and how I'm very good. So I think she's at home with it now. Now, was mom always on board for you being a fighter? Yeah, she just, I mean, she just supports, like, all of her boys, you know, my little sister, too. Like, she's just very supportive. Like, fighting obviously is scary. And even before all my fights, she'll look at the the picture of the, like, the poster of the fight. She's like, wow, man, she looks scary. And I'm like, you know what I mean? So she's always a little nervous, and she's always been that way. But I just think she's always seen the passion I've had. So I think she just 100% supports it. And we mentioned about this being a rematch, you defending your title here. Uh, as you ha- as you and your coaches have gotten ready for this fight, is there something your coaches have said to you about David, uh, of, of how he is a different fighter now as opposed to the first meeting? Yeah, so he's only fought one team. He's fought me and he fought my teammate, Maddie. And, like, he's looked – he kind of looks the same. I feel like I fought a more dangerous version of him because 
it was his first fight, and he was extremely aggressive. I think he's like 30 years old, too. And I, I was just an 18 year old kid. A lot of like kids my age probably wouldn't have been able to handle his aggression and his, I mean, he was throwing some wild stuff. And so I think I fought the most dangerous version of him. I think what my, with this fight with my buddy Maddie, I think he became a lot more conserved. He fought a little bit smarter. And I just, I've been training for so long, I just tend to do a lot better with people like that. I've been training for so long, I train with, you mean, guys like UFC fighters like Rob Font, you know I mean, Kyle Bachner, yeah, guys like that. So I'm used to playing the technical game. So I think he's evolved, but I definitely think I feel like I fought already the, the most dangerous version of him. Now, when you train with you know someone like Rob or, or Kyle who, who have made it to the UFC, do you look in, to see how they handle themselves in and out of the cage and maybe start to try to, to find traits that they have that you know you need to put into your own game to, to get to that level? Oh, without a doubt. Like we spent, I spent a week, uh, my manager now, Tyson, Rob's manager, he invited me in May for a week in Vegas. And I just seen, I was just a kid man, like in a candy store. Like I was just at the UFC PI and just seeing how Rob uh, approached training. He is, you know, I mean, obviously at the gym, you see, you have a lot of drill partners and stuff like that. But just when you, I kind of noticed when you drill with a UFC fighter, it's a different level of focus. I think focus is the biggest thing. I just think that he's always asking questions. He's always, when he's in the gym, it's 100% focused on getting better. There's no nonsense. You know what I mean? Every, there's a joke here and there, but there's, there's no nonsense. He's focused 100% on getting better. And it's just the little details, I think, that's what makes uh, a difference between high-level guys and got difference between guys making it to the UFC and not making it to the UFC. Now, could this fight on, on October 13th be your last amateur fight? If I perform, if I keep performing the way I am, this will be my last amateur fight. I think there's no reason for me not to go pro. I think I am. I I think I'm tailor made for the pro level. I think a big problem for my me as an amateur. I was just uh when I first started fighting, I was thinking a little too much, and now I think I'm I'm more comfortable now. I'm I'm just calm, and I I go out there and I perform and I use my skills. I think I'm just built for the pro level. I've been training with pro fighters pretty much my whole life, and I think you know what I mean adding elbows in there on the ground and knees to the face, five minute rounds. I honestly think I'm built for the pro level. That, that's one of the things about the amateurs that's to me is kind of fascinating because you can't throw elbows. Yeah, so is it, it. <laughs> is it tough on fight night to, I mean, obviously you're working on it inside the training room for, you know, when, when you do turn pro, I mean, is it just that mindset of realizing, okay, guys, I, I can't throw this. And has there ever been a point where you were about to throw it in a fight and you're like, Oh, I can't do that. No, I definitely think about it. You know what I mean? Cause I just think, especially on the ground, especially at 125, where, you know, we're not the most powerful guys. So I just think that when you take away something like an elbow where that's really a fight ender, you know what I mean? It's a lot. You know I mean, Lozon tells me all the time, it's just there's a huge difference between getting punched in the face and then getting elbowed in the face. You know what I mean? So I just, man, I wish we were allowed to do it. It's, it's tough. You think about it. But when I'm in there, you know I mean? I'm pretty, I think if I was overly uh, nervous and just chaotic in there, I think it, maybe I would have thrown an elbow by now. But when I'm in there, I'm pretty calm. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a sparring thing for me, man. I've been doing this for so long. So I, I honestly think about things like that. I'm like, oh, right here, I could throw an oak. I just, I just don't do it. Obviously, I can't. So definitely, it's you know, I can't wait till I can. There is always the amateur scenes a a uh, funky uh, scene because there's a lot of things that could happen. Has anything crazy happened to you? Like your opponent doesn't show up for the weigh-ins, or he weighs in, he doesn't show up. Anything like that happened for you? Honestly, no, nothing like that's happened. But like, I've heard crazy stories. Like you know, especially growing up in the the fight world and having all these. Uh, Older guys, I feel like I've fought at the perfect time where none of that nonsense really happens anymore. I feel like that was really like back in the day, you know what I mean? Like not even back in the day, maybe a couple of years ago, two, three years ago, you know what I mean? When I was like 16, 17, that, I, always, I used to hear a lot about that, people not showing up. And I think I've kind of, it's kind of like, especially local MMA and amateur MMA has kind of gotten to a point where it isn't as uh, chaotic anymore and caveman-ish, you know what I mean? I feel like it's it's pretty organized and professional, especially an organization like Cage Titans and ammo it's pretty well run it, when you do make that that leap to the next level is it 125 or 135 125 without a doubt you know what i mean i'm i'm not a big guy well at 125 i do you know I, mean? I walk around 145 which is not it's not an easy cut but it's not really a hard cut you know what i mean so i think 125 my size and my speed and stuff i think i'm built for 125 and i think the ufc you really see the 125 division is pretty like you know what i mean this talented guys it's just not a lot of guys so I feel like the money to be made, man. I think I can I can get in there early. Uh, obviously, you're very young, and and you know overall the 125 pound division is very young in the UFC. Yeah, uh, just been around for you know, five years or so. Uh, what do you see as the evolution in the 125 pound fight game? I mean, obviously, it's you know as more and more fighters come into division. For you being in that division, what what do you see as how this 
how this division's evolving. Honestly, it's just I'm honestly like I'm a, I'm a Mighty Mouse fan and stuff, but just seeing how I feel like the division wasn't really big growing because we just had one guy running the whole division. There was no interest, you know. What I mean, he was just dusting everybody easily, you know. What I mean, and it's just tough, you know what I mean, for our division to really grow if there's no controversy, you know what I mean? Controversy brings in viewers. I think people, you know what I mean, that's a world renowned fact, you know what I mean? So I just feel like him losing with Sahuda coming in, I feel like it's a little more interesting. I just think it's just going to take years to grow. Like like the 135 pound division wasn't that big. You know what I mean? Now it's one of the most popular divisions, one of the most stacked divisions. So you see the women's 115 pound division is stacked, you know what I mean? So I just think we need some time. And I think him, Mighty Mouse losing, I think is, uh, is going to help. Obviously, we all know the key for you to accomplish in this upcoming fight is get the win. Uh, how how much of uh, is the mindset of trying to go out there and get the finish because you, 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 all of your fights have end in decision? Is that kind of the uh, the the number two uh, goal for you in this one? Yeah, definitely, man. Like as far as a lot of guys, you mean as an amateur, they learn certain things. And as an amateur, for me, I didn't really learn because I didn't, I haven't lost and I haven't really learned from any of that. But I did learn uh, when I first started fighting. I was just very timid. I was overthinking. Now I'm going out there, and especially in my last two fights, I'm looking for the finish. And I'm not really putting too much pressure on it. I think as long as, you mean, guys like Lozon tell me all the time, as long as you're looking for the finish, that's all that matters. You know what I mean? I think that I do a good job, especially in my last two fights, of really hunting for the finish. You know what I mean? So I think I'm just good. As long as I look for the finish and I'm hunting for the finish, it should take care of itself. But like I said, you know what I mean? At, especially at the pro level, I mean, adding elbows, especially with my ground game and my ground and pound, I think the finishes will come a lot uh, more often at the pro level than for me as an amateur. I just feel like I'm, I'm built for the pro level. Final thing, man. I really do appreciate the time. Is there anything about you, whether it's a fighter as a person, that might shock your fans? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So you know, what I mean, like, it's one biggest thing for me, man. Is like I I watch a ton of like TV shows. You know what I mean? Like not even like TV shows that like my friends watch or anything like that. Just like kind of just the corniest TV shows, man. Guy like shows like like superhero shows and like like vampire shows, stuff like that. Stuff like that you don't really expect like a fighter to watch. You know what I mean? That's some of the stuff that like my friends will ask me like, oh, like they'll tell me something. I'm like, nah, I was watching this. And they'll be like, what? Like, you know what I mean? It makes, it literally makes no sense. You know what I mean? But it's good shows. So it's nothing I can say. Awesome. Awesome, man. Where can everybody follow you at on social media? Instagram are these, Instagram is mreposo underscore. No, Mitch Raposo underscore. Twitter's mreposo underscore. And Facebook, just Mitch Raposo.